college football. A brief glimpse at downtown Los Angeles, and happily, we can tell you the temperature today is seasonal. Low 80s, not 100 plus like last week over in Pasadena. The Coliseum very near downtown, adjacent to the Southern California campus where today's game will be played. And the Penn State Nittany Lions uh, last played a football game on this field, 1968 against UCLA. The Lions come in today young, relatively inexperienced, having lost their opening game to Texas this season, 8-3-1 and one last year. But they come back with the same head coach, Joe Paterno. This is his 25th season. 220 wins, more than any other active coach in Division 1A. He is a statesman for his profession. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Bob Greasy. Bob, when you start pondering Penn State, you've got to start at quarterback, I think. Well, Tony Saka is the quarterback. He and Todd Marinovich came out of high school three years ago, highly touted. Uh -huh. Marinovich on the West Coast and Saka on the uh, East Coast. The difference is Marinovich was redshirted behind Rodney Pete. Saka had to play because of injuries to three guys ahead of him. The problem is he has struggled with consistency. He has not been an accurate passer. And today, if Penn State's going to have a chance, they need some big plays out of Saka to those outstanding wide receivers that they have. Well, Joe Paterno is still Joe. And the Lions are still the Lions. You start building this team with a rock wall defense, anchor it with linebackers, beat up the other guy, and then control the ball by running it. There is no question that Joe Paterno's success has been consistency and conservatism. And you first do that with defense, and then you, you run the ball on offense. Southern California, as they come in, and you see the numbers on the Trojans over last season, they defeated Syracuse in their opener, 36-14. to Larry Smith, in his fourth season, came here from Arizona, 28-8-1, 21-1-1 in the back 10 which is quite remarkable, and looking for a fourth straight trip to the Rose Bowl with a conference title. But Southern California is another team that is deeply tied to running the ball, yet... The quarterback is their man right now. Well, Todd Marinovich is a redshirt junior. Last year's team was a veteran ball club. They lost uh, 13 starters. Marinovich is going to have to be the leader this year. Nine starters off of that defense are gone. The offense is going to have to control the game. Marinovich is very confident, a very much improved quarterback even from last year, and he's going to have to throw the ball early to, uh, to get uh, SC going because uh, Penn State is going to stack against the run today in Southern California. Penn State is going to have the ball first offensively. Southern California won the toss. They uh, chose to defer to the second half. The strengths and weaknesses as defined by our analyst, Bob Greasy. Well, it's kind of strange to see a Penn State team strength offensively being their wide receivers. Paterno says it's the best group of wide receivers he's ever had at Penn State. And for SC defensively, what Saka will be looking at is four new starters in the secondary. And although Penn State is going to try and run the football. When he tries to throw it, he's going to be throwing against a very green secondary for the uh, SC Trojans. It'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, the Trojans kick to this man because he had a big day last week against Texas in the opening game. Uh, Gary is a typical Penn State football player to me. He played the hero position in the defensive secondary last year. He was a tailback the previous two years and ran for a lot of yards. But he's, a, he's very typical of the kind of athlete that Joe Paterno and his staff recruit at Penn State. They recruit athletes. Grant Runnerstrom will do the kicking off for Southern California, as he has in every game, from Granada Hills. And uh, Leroy Thompson will go back there with Gary Brown. Uh, Leroy Thompson is out of Knoxville, Tennessee, of all places, playing tailback at Penn State. So the game's on. Very comfortable conditions for everybody here at the Coliseum. The ball carries three, four, five, six, seven yards into the end zone. And uh, Brown, with no chance to get up ahead of steam, puts it down, and the Lions will go from the 20 first down. Penn State arrived here yesterday about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Took them all day to get out here. This is the young man that uh, so much was expected of when he came to the campus, so much is still expected of him. But Joe said yesterday, in a way, it was too bad they didn't have a chance to redshirt him because uh, you don't see a whole lot of freshmen, and particularly freshmen at the skill positions, playing at State College. But Tony's there, and he rolls it out to throw it on the run and completes his first pass, and it's good for a first down. The ball is caught by David Daniels, a senior out of Sarasota, Florida. 
So the offensive alignment for Penn State will go this way. Saka is uh, he's a big guy too. He's 6'5", 225. Sam Gash, another big guy. Leroy Thompson at tailback. The asterisks, of course, meaning Letterman. Perry Smith and David Daniels are the burners outside. Up front, not the biggest Penn State alignment you've ever seen, but they're big enough, and they're good, and they're going to get better. You see seniors along the offensive front, but that doesn't always define experience for you. Leroy Thompson. And that's the old bread and butter play for the Nittany Lions, just like a student body right and left, the bread and butter play at Southern California. The defense for USC, McDaniel, Frugge, and Gibson in the front lines uh, down, Gibson being the veteran there. Backers are very good. Hartsacker and Ross in particular, Gee and Barber. The secondary is, is sort of a place for unemployed tailbacks since uh, Calvin Holmes and uh, Marcus Hopkins both came here as tailbacks. It's second down at about five, a second. Goes straight back, has good protection, and bumps one down the pipe. Good. Down to the 45. The reception by Daniels extended inside the 35 as he broke away from a Trojan tackler. Two of the first three plays for Penn State are passing plays. Look from behind the green uh, secondary of USC. A nice throw by Saka over the linebackers. And in front of the deep safety, big completion, big confidence builder. He got away from Calvin Holmes. Remember, he is a converted tailback, and uh, he's playing a new position as Sam Gash, a 225-pound fullback senior from Hendersonville, North Carolina. Number 11 carried the ball. And there's almost nothing there. Give him a yard, make it second down and nine. The ball is now resting at the 33 of Southern California. Terry Smith, number eight, wide to the bottom of the picture. Second. Fakes it, keeps it, rolls out, gets a good block. Puts his head down, goes for the first down, and he's got the marker. First down for the Lions inside the 25. Terry Smith has got to be concerned about his defensive units. Last year, they led the Pac-10 in almost every defensive category and nationally led in yards against the rush. This year has been a little bit of a problem with those nine starters graduating. Thompson behind the line of scrimmage. McDaniel, number 78, got there. Terry McDaniels, 275-pound redshirt freshman from Altadena, California. McDaniel takes over the position that Tim Ryan played last year for the Trojans. A defensive team for the Trojans had three defensive players, four defensive players drafted in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, and two of them were drafted in the first round. Second down and about 14. The second goes down the middle and the pass is incomplete. His intended receiver was his tight end Al Golden, but Golden had a Trojan behind him and one in front of him, and uh, the pass was incomplete. Well, it was covered, Keith, as you mentioned, but it was a good throw by Saka because nobody was open, and he threw it away from the defense, and the only man that had a chance to catch it was Golden, his receiver. So it is third down and still... Right at 14. Going to put it up. Goes underneath. Thompson screen pass. Caught and dragged down. Great play by Marcus Hopkins, a 200-pound senior converted running back playing strong safety. So that'll get your kicking unit in. And for the first time, I think you find that Penn State's kicking team is not outstanding. Here's a screen. You can't run a screen. Here's the man covering him. You can't run a screen game at the end of August. You see the numbers on Marinovich's height against uh, Syracuse, his career record. Marinovich rolls it left, going to put it in the air, lob down the sideline. Gary Willman reaches up, makes the catch, and it's good at the 35-yard line. Well, we mentioned in the opening that SC would probably throw to set up the run. 
Take a look at the right side is Wellman's pattern. The double zone, he releases around him. Marinovich throws it on time just as he's going around. An outstanding throw, especially for your first throw of the ball game. He got behind Leonard Humphreys. Southern California has more speed, I think, this year than I have seen on almost any USC team. Time is out for the moment. Jim Fogel tends the referee. Something to do with the clock, apparently. I can't hear him. His microphone is not on. Besides, he's looking at the clock, so it must have something to do with the clock. Keith, you know, you mentioned about the SC speed. You know, one of the big surprises Larry Smith had three and a half years ago when he came to Southern Cal from Arizona was the lack of speed on the Trojan ball club. He said he was really surprised that they didn't have much speed. Now he took care of that. Yeah, now he took care of it. <laughs> yeah, track, track team is right. <laughs> couple of scores as some surprises come through halftime the Washington State Cougars who were pummeled by Wyoming last week at home uh, beating BYU which beat Miami last week and that game is being played in Provo and Purdue and I'm not surprised frankly that Purdue's leading Washington at halftime and Bob Greasy is elated <laughs> the Boilermakers are back well, they're messing around trying to get the clock fixed. I don't know what, I still haven't been able to hear the, the uh, referee's explanation of what the problem is. It may get to a point where they have the back judge keep the time. Raul Spears opens at fullback with Ricky Urbans. Urbans didn't have all that big a night uh, in uh, running the ball. He wound up with something like 96 yards against Syracuse. He is, of course, was the MVP in the Rose Bowl last year. You're not going to keep him quiet very long. He's too good. Gary Wellman, of course, the wideout who just made that reception. Larry Wallace, the other wideout, is a real speed burner. The guys up front, uh, there's enough experience there, particularly in uh, Tucker, who's an All-American, Harlow, Moody, and Derek Beast is new, with Apolsky uh, taking over the center job as a redshirt freshman. So it's first down, Southern California, just outside the 35-yard line, and there's the old familiar, put your head down and knock a hole. Uh, Ricky Irvin's carrying the ball, but he's hit by Darren Perry and Reggie Gibbon. Let's take a look at the strengths now offensively for SC. They have a very balanced attack. They run as well as they throw. For Penn State, they are very tough to run against. Oftentimes, have an eight-man front. Look for SC to come out throwing the ball as they did on their first possession of the game. Time call for a moment. That was not a yellow flag that was thrown out there. That's a piece of equipment. Southern California, a lot of them are wearing those small braces that go across the lower back and tend to protect uh, down in that lumbar region and, and the kidney area, and uh, one of those that come loose from somebody. Ricky Urban's in particular wears it, and it's probably a good thing because a, a guy that carries the ball as many times as he does gets up pretty sore on Monday morning. The clock is still all screwed up here at the Coliseum. That's, uh, that's become a very common thing in recent times, it seems but uh, they, they're not able to get it uh, to work. Penn State had a chance, missed on a 39-yard field goal try off their first possession, and we are in a scoreless ball game right now. Southern California owns the ball, resting at the 40. It is second down, and they've got to go just across the 45 to get the first down with Giannetti, Dieter, and Benfati as your three down fellows with Ravotti, Wright, Goganis, and Givens, the linebackers. You'll see D'Onofrio in there pretty soon. Secondary is Fusetti uh, Perry. Willie Thomas is the center fielder and uh, the principal man back there. He runs the show, and, and uh, Leonard Humphreys is the other corner. Joel Scott is not in there now as they go to Travis Hanna instead on second down and about five. You hear Marinovich checking off, setting himself up, gets some heat, gets it away in a hurry, beating the heat, and the pass is caught about a yard, yard and a half short of the first down. That's the one thing I think that sticks out about him this year, Bob, is he gets rid of the ball a little quicker. He's, he's beating the pressure a little better. Well, he had a good year last year. It was his first year playing after backing up uh, Rodney Pete, actually sitting out the year red redshirting. But when you play one year and you, you have some success, you come back the next year and say, I can even do better. And he is much more confident this year than he ever was last year. Third down and close to two yards. Ricky Urban has the first down. Punches his way to the 47. 
And I don't care what the names are when you take it inside the tackles uh, against Penn State. You're going to earn what you get. Ohio State beating up on Boston College. Since in the post Flutie days, the Golden Eagles have not flown too high. Georgia finally squeaks out a one pointer over Southern Miss. It looked like Southern Miss was going to get off to a great start, having beaten Alabama last week. This is Urban's again. Cut it back inside, and for the first time today, the ball is on Penn State's side of the field at the 48 yard line. Brett Wright, inside linebacker, junior out of Pomfret, Maryland, made the tackle. A fellow named Eric Hunter is making a big difference, I think, in the fortunes of the Purdue Boilermakers this year, huh? He's playing very well. Quarterback. Second down, long five. Marinovich back to throw it. Goes underneath to Irvins, and they're five. White shirts there to get him for a yard loss. Greg Fusetti and the nose guard Todd Berger are the principal tacklers on the play. Now you're looking at six on third down. Third and six. You saw the Californians leading Miami in the first quarter by a score of seven to three. Some of you in the East may be surprised. A lot of people in the West are not. Bruce Snyder to prove the California Golden Bears are goodly bit. Marinovich, left hander rolls right, throws very well doing that. Pass is caught by Travis Hanna, a sophomore out of Inglewood, California. That's a community down there by the Forum where the Lakers call home. He gets enough for the first down inside the 39 of Penn State. Hannah's out here. He's just going to run a big, deep curl. The inside man is going to clear out as the quarterback gets outside the pocket. A nice mixture for Southern Cal. Don't keep your quarterback inside the pocket all the time. Mix it up for your pass protection and your offensive line. You know, Marinovich, Keith not only throws well from the pocket, being 6'4", and can get outside, as he showed just there, also runs the option and runs it fairly well. This is Irvins on a little cutback to the inside. He runs into number 99, Rich McKenzie, and McKenzie takes him down, but... He picks up about seven yards. Talking with Todd Marinovich yesterday, I asked him if he's where, where are the cracks in the Penn State defense. Right now, there's not a whole lot, and uh, they try not to give you the deep stuff. They try to bait you into throwing it deep, and then they, they get a lot of interceptions. Last year, they had a team interceptions was really high, so they they try to get you to throw the ball downfield in long situations and get those interceptions. Second down, long two. After the run by Urbans, fullback Spears with a carry for a first down of the Penn State 25. This is a typical Southern California march. They've used the pass to spread them a little bit to open some cracks, and now they're pound on it's them. A nice mixture of pass first and run second being utilized by coordinator John Matsko for SC. You just cannot come out and try and beat uh, beat S beat uh, Penn State. With the SC running attack, you have to throw the ball to loosen them up. Let's a look at coordinator John Matsko. Urbans. Out of Muir High School in the Pasadena area, picks up a couple of yards on that carry down near inside the 23. The offensive front for USC, Moody is 285, 6'7", Beast 265, Apolsky at center 260, Mark Tucker 6'3 uh, or so, 270, Pat Harlow 6'7", and 270. They're big enough. to get that one back. Penalty flag goes down. Humphreys had a shot at it, but 
may have had flag thrown there. May have had his back, bat, hand on the back, uh, Keith. Might have given him a little push in the middle of the back. It was uh, well done, though, Leonard, even though the guy happened to be in the wrong place. That's what it is. Yep. Leonard Humphreys, number six. It's a good look at it here. As Wallace comes right at you, the ball is a tad bit late. You see Humphrey looking to the inside. Now watch his left arm. He grabs the shirt. Yeah, he shirt tails. Grabs the shirt. He, was, uh, he wasn't too sure that he was going to get there to knock the ball away. It was a nice play. He didn't have to grab the shirt. Wallace is a sophomore out of Stockton, California, and uh, he's really quick. You've got to stay with him, or you wind up doing what Leonard just did, trying to protect yourself. Puts the ball just inside the 19-yard line with the first down for SC. They give it to Urban. He cuts it back into the middle and runs into two of the Lions. The two being the inside backers, Brett Wright, 47, and Guganis, uh, 42. They stayed right at home where they're supposed to. But if you're a defense uh, coordinator for the uh, Penn State Lions, uh, Jerry Sandusky, if you're going to give up any points, this is the way you want to do it. Slowly, you don't want to give up the cheap touchdown, yep. the long passes. Give you every chance in the world to make a mistake. To make a mistake, exactly. There's Sandusky. This is the 13th play of the drive. Marinovich pumps it. Now he's got Janetti after him and throws it away. Frank Janetti, number 85, who had a big week last week in the Texas loss. And he was after uh, Todd Marinovich. Now you don't want that 265 pounder to climb in your frame. 85 is Janetti right there. Three guys block him, spins out. Four guys have a chance at him. Look at the uh, determination. Continues to go. Had a great game, as you mentioned, Keith. Two and a half sacks last week against Texas. And that's the reason why right there. Great uh, desire. He's a fifth-year senior out of Palm River, New Jersey. Mine has gone to the lead over California in the first period. That game's up at Berkeley. Okay. Ricky Irvin, that might get you a face mask. Yep, it will. That's just bad luck, really, because the Penn State man reached for him, Rich McKenzie, and uh, happened to get him, and the flag came out. Penn State was flagged for 13 penalties in last week's ball game against Texas. Third down and long play. Penn State was gearing up for the pass. Yeah, McKenzie was just was just grabbing, just yeah. reaching for he anything was, he could get. He was rushing the passer, and then yep. there was the man with the ball. He says, I, yep. let me grab at him. They mark off the penalty, and we'll pause five seconds so our ABC stations can identify themselves. Channel 7, KABC-TV, Los Angeles. So with that penalty, they move the markers. And that is a big penalty. Oh, it's a big one. It uh, makes it burst and goal. It's yeah. like a turnover. I mean, yep. uh, they had him stop. For turnover, a lot of mistakes in last week's ball game. Had some problems with his kicking game. Penalties. They give it back to the fullback, Raul Spears. And on first and goal from the nine, just kind of follows the, the big uglies up front and picks up a couple of yards. Spears is 235, a junior out of Compton. He doesn't need an escort to go home. I'll tell you that. He's big enough to take care of himself. And for a man that size, is very quick. But he's kind of the forgotten man in that backfield, too, because everybody talks about Marinovich and Irvin's the tailback, but Spears, the fullback, he could get some yardage just uh, without anybody looking at him. He's a junior. And the guy behind him, uh, Moody, is from Temple City, California. He's a 230 pound and still growing. 15th play in this possession coming up now. Second down and goal from just outside the seven. Marinovich gives to Ricky Irvin. And Penn State's defense, ever grudging, will take him down at the five with Reggie Givens, a sophomore outside linebacker out of Sussex, Virginia, 58, making the tackle. Those two outside backers are McKenzie, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Gibbons out of Virginia. They, uh, 
Both good players. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Both true freshmen last year started in the Holiday Bowl. Gibbons, in fact, started five ball games. Third down and goal, USC on the Penn State five. Marinovich getting some heat from the backside. Passes away. Griffin touchdown. Blake Griffin, the tight end. He's player control. The quarterback is actually pulling the linebackers. Griffin was sitting in the backfield, set up the block, let all the linebackers score. Well, you are still not driving this yet. 16 plays, 7 to use a little more than 8 minutes in that possession to take the lead. Quinn Rodriguez for the point. It's good. 3.05 to go, first quarter. Southern California. pretty high and uh, they run together 33 came up uh, Brian Mazur and ran in collided with Thompson and that sort of negated anybody getting up ahead of steam let's go back to a lot of stuff on this one here's the receiver he's going to clear out now it's a corner blitz the corners coming and the inside linebacker here's Griffin right here watch him set up and sneak out right here as Marinovich rolls away to get more time corner on the bottom comes inside linebacker the corner is free but Marinovich Gets away from him and makes a nice throw to Griffin. It's kind of a sneaky play, but the attacking defense of Penn State didn't help. Lions go to the attack now. Saka back to throw it and goes down the pipe. Got a man wide open. Is tight in Al Golden. The pass is caught. Golden bringing it down uh, taking a hard lick just over midfield. Big gain. Saka now is uh, four out of five. And his receiver, Golden, is shaken up. He really took a lick. But Southern California is the way that that particular defensive alignment giving Penn State the middle of the field for the tight end. I'm out. On first down, call it midfield. It's just barely over midfield. Golden had to leave the ball game. Saka hands the ball off to Thompson, the tailback, and he pops it. Leroy Thompson broke that first tackle. 205-pound senior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, of course, Johnny Majors tried to keep him at home and get him to go play for the Volunteers. He didn't want to. Yeah, he actually called Penn State. He says, hey, why aren't you guys recruiting me? I'm interested. Come on down here and recruit me. <laughs> Joe said, who are you? <laughs> said, I want to play for you. Well, come on up here. Okay. And it worked out. Picked up the first down, and he got through that first tackle. He's a big, strong runner. Ball is at the 35-yard line, and Saka back to pass. Penalty flag is on the field. Down the middle it goes, intended for Perry Smith. First time they've thrown to the speedster from Monroeville, Pennsylvania. And the flag is down. Let's see which way it goes. Trojans offside. See, I've been impressed with Saka so far in the ball game. You know, he came in only completing 39% of his passes. He's been right on the target. Yeah, but go ahead and explain why his percentages are so low. Well, it's the Penn State passing system. Uh, they throw the ball downfield most all the time. They don't take any of this nickel and dime stuff where you dump it off to the backs or a tight end crossing shallow. There is no easy stuff in this passing system for Penn State. It's all downfield. Your percentage is going to be low. Saka now four out of five for 71 yards. First down and five from the Trojans 30. Gives it to Thompson up the middle. This time he didn't quite break the tackle. Scott Ross, number 35, got a piece of him as he went by, and that destroyed his momentum and balance. So he'll be a little short of the first down. As you look at Ross right there, two-time All-Pac-10 linebacker and the leader. He just steps aside that offensive lineman, and then Thompson gives him a little juke. And he is the heart and soul of that defensive team, Scott Ross. 
Al Golden is back in there now at tight end. It'll be second down and two for the Lions. Back up, wants to throw. He's blindsided by Mike Salmon, the quarterback. The freshman from Phoenix got him. One of the things they wanted to do to uh, Saka was blitz here as he right here. Salmon is going to come, even though he rolls to his right a little bit, nobody is blocked. The backs both go to the right side, and there is nobody left to block the cornerback who was in on a blitz. And that'll make it third down and 13. That was a big defensive play. The pick up a blitz. Throw a hummer to Golden, and Golden is sandwiched. Howard McCowan really nailed him. So Al's going to get up, walk away from it, but he's going to feel like he got hit by a runaway truck. Well, this is an area, this is a four-down situation here, Keith. They didn't pick up the first down, but with the way their, their field goal kickers have been uh, kicking lately, they're going to go for, for the first down. On fourth and three. Saka got in. That's Golden to tight end to the 15 yard line and a first down. That's a heck of a pass. It was a burner, but the tight end held on, and now Penn State is knocking on the door at the end of the quarter. Trailing Southern California 7 to nothing, but they've got a first down at the SC 15. They put Gary Brown in at tailback and Brian O'Neill in at fullback. Brown is the senior. Tony Saka has been a dominant figure so far early in this ball game for the Lions offense. Let's see if Brown and O'Neill can generate something here. Brown with the fake. Saka keeps it and taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Craig. Hartsucker. Back at the 27 yard line. Hartsucker, number 40, top of your screen, top left. That's Duffy, number 65. Hartsucker was a starter two years ago. In fact, had seven sacks of the quarterback. Last year was beat out by Junior Seau who was the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, was a draft choice number one of the San Diego Chargers. That's a loss of 12 yards, and the right side of the Penn State line moved. So they may tack on another five, because that's a dead ball foul. Pretty tough, Keith, when you you are such a good pass rusher like Hartsiker was two years ago, and then get beat out. The play was legal by Wolf. That means the tight end moved, and he, he, he can't. Well, if, if a defensive man jumps into the neutral zone and causes the offensive man to move, it's a no play. No play is what it was. O'Neill is out. Gash is back now on second down. Saka. Got his man inside the 10, out of bounds at the 8-yard line, David Daniels, covered by Calvin Holmes. Well, let me rephrase that. Calvin Holmes trying to cover him. Just a great play and a great throw by Saka. He also got a very nice block by number 11. Watch number 11 to the right of your screen. Maybe you'll see the block. Outside containment. Excellent throw on the run. Saka is looking, well, this is the first time I've seen him play in person. All these reports we've got about him being inaccurate, I don't, I don't believe any of that stuff. Third down and three. Thompson is back at tailback. And touchdown. Penn State Al Golden, who has been pounded on in a ball game, is now rewarded with the TD. And Saka got away from Marcus Huxley. Take a look at the tight end goal, and nobody's going to cover him because they're all blitzing. But the, the man that makes the play is Saka because he gets away.
away from the blitz. And Golden has the easy touchdown. Bayak is into the ball game now, the freshman. Who will try to tie it at seven early in the second quarter of play. Bangs it through there. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Sacker now. 8 out of 9. 122 yards to the touchdown. The stations WHAS TV, Channel 11 in Louisville, Kentucky. Now bringing you ABC's college football in addition to the other programming. So welcome aboard WHAS. And let's help O'Hara get those Louisville Cardinals cranked up. We'll see the Cardinal basketball team uh, early on in December when they play in the Big Four Classic up in Indianapolis. Denny Crum always participates in that. Welcome to UHAS TV. Bayak will kick it off. Travis Hanna and Curtis Conway are the deep people. Curtis Conway is an interesting story. He was an outstanding quarterback in high school and uh, didn't quite cut the mustard with the grades. Went to junior college for a semester, got his grades up, checked into USC, and he's going to be a goodly bit of fun before he's gone. Meantime, Craig Fayak from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, pops it, drills it down to the seven-yard line, and here comes Hannah. Travis Hanna, the speedster, and one man on the corner brings him down. He almost broke that baby big. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. The three backs will come this way, all three of them. Now watch as uh, Southern Cal is going to blitz when you get out in this area. Here's Golden. He's going to slide over here. Nobody's going to touch him. But the quarterback out here, the man he has to beat is right here. The fake is to the right. Nice play by Saka. The avoid now. It's gravy. I got my man in the end zone. All I got to do is flip it to him. Touchdown. That, and Saka made that play right there. Aggressive defense by Southern Cal. Saka beat it. Trojans will go to work now. Their second possession of the ball game at the 25-yard line with Scott Lockwood in a tailback. But Marinovich comes out throwing. Gets his pass away. Throws a wounded goose upfield. And uh, it is incomplete. He's lucky to get that one back. He's trying to get it to Scott Lockwood out of the backfield, and he didn't have anything on it, throwing it off his heels. The Goodyear Blip, Columbia, out of Carson, California. John Creighton, Redondo Beach, at the controls, flying in the blue sky of Southern California this afternoon. And the ocean haze is pretty much gone now, and it's quite bright. Very pleasant. Take it out of 10. Marinovich, short drop, quick pop to the sidelines, and uh, Leonard Humphreys makes Gary Wellman pay for it. Do you sense a little shift in attitude here? Well, Penn State has played well the entire ball game, uh, Keith. Even the touchdown drive by Southern Cal, they didn't they didn't give up anything very easily. It was everything was tough. In fact, Southern Cal took 16 plays to get down. And offensively, Penn State has played well. Look at the uh, comparison of the two quarterbacks. Saka having the best of it. Third down and 10 from the 25. Out of the shotgun. Gets it off. Got his man. First down. Wellman. 46 yard line. The Trojans get the big play. 21 yard pickup. Reggie Gibbons. Well, Marinovich is on the right. He's looking for Wellman first. You read deep to short. Steps up in the pocket. Now watch as he throws the ball away from the defense. That's just too good. Yeah, but they got exactly the matchup they wanted. Oh, yeah. Bob, they got a linebacker trying to cover Wellman. Exactly Forget right. It. Got exactly no right. Two chance. That's why you put the man in motion. The man came in motion to pick up the linebacker coverage. Ricky Irvin's up close to midfield, about four yards on the carry. You see Janetti getting up from the stack, 85. One of the participants, the other was 38. Mark D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio had a T-neck New Jersey in there, and he's a wild man. There are your top 10 scores. You can look at them. Auburn is not the old fired powerhouse, I don't think, so far that they were thought to be. Not yet. Of course, this not time yet. of year, there's a lot of 
A lot of them laying in the bushes. Yep. Elves going back to the lead over Miami. There's a golden yet, but they're coming. Here comes the second man with the ball, Curtis Conway. Young man we were talking about a while ago. I mean, he can haul it. 6'2", 180. That time, the Lions had a man at home waiting for him, and they took him down. I, so many times, I don't know how many Penn State football games I've done over the years. It goes all the way back to the late 50s. I don't know that I've ever seen him really blown out of a ball game. But it goes back to Joe Paterno and the basics and the foundation that he puts into the overall program. Timeout, 12 one to go, first half, we're tied at seven. The replay for UCLA, so after I got through here at the Coliseum, I ate supper, and went over to the local station and KTLA and redid it. So I got to do the game twice before I went back to Mexico City that night. Yeah. A long day. Marinovich, prowling around, is now going to go out of bounds. He just didn't have anybody to throw to. And he was, I think, fearful of trying to dump it. And uh, instead, uh, ate it. And it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the reason he didn't have anybody, Keith, was because Humphreys, Len Humphreys, was covering Wellman. Wellman was trying to run an out and up. Marinovich had a lot of time because he was outside the pocket, but good coverage by Humphreys. So Ron Dale is in the punt, had five in the opening game at Syracuse, averaging just under 42. A high school All-American. Penn State sends two people back, Tyson Thomas and Terry Smith. They'll get some air under it. Football, and the ball is down at the 15. Terry Smith didn't handle it. And uh, that reminds me of the problems UCLA had, huh? We'll be in the state of Michigan all day next uh, Saturday. You got UCLA and uh, Michigan at Ann Arbor. And then up the road, a little over an hour's drive, uh, we'll be working with a second game, Notre Dame and Michigan State. It all starts at 12 noon Eastern time here on ABC. Michigan State playing Syracuse today. On first down, Saka rolls to throw, gets it off. It is incomplete. The ball was thrown very hard and could not be handled by David Daniels, and David gets up counting his appendages to make sure they're all still in place. But he took a lick from Stephon Pace. Take a look at Southern Cal defensively last year, their national ranking. They were first in defense, second in total defense, and third in scoring defense, and of course, Nine starters of that team have departed, as we mentioned. Junior Seau, the linebacker, and Mark Carrier, both number one draft choices. This is Gary Brown. And he moves it to the 19. One of the things in looking uh, at what Southern California did in the opening game against Syracuse, they didn't run block all that well, I didn't think. And I, was, I frankly didn't think that McDaniels was much of a force uh, from the three down linemen, but uh, Larry Smith said yesterday he'd lost 10, 12 pounds and was getting a little quicker. But Penn State so far today has been able to handle the down people of Southern California's defense pretty well. Third down. Saka's pass is tipped. It is tipped. And there's a penalty flag. Penalty flag is back there where the quarterback threw it from. Could be a hold, and it is. It's a split crew working the ball game today for uh, the Pac-10. Uh, Jim Fogeltance is the referee. Uh, Ray Highsmith, the head linesman. Uh, Dan Priesterbach is the side judge. And Dan Hill, the back judge from the Central Independent. Officials Association in the East Coast. David Hicks is the umpire. Doug Robbins, the line judge. Penalty. And Walt Lucas, the field judge. Penalty refused. Fourth down. Doug Helkowski is in the ball game to punt now for Penn State. And when Doug's in, it gets pretty exciting. Helkowski has punted in 23 games in his career at Penn State, and he's had eight blocked punts. Of course, Larry Smith, when he was at Arizona, 
There you go with eight block punts in 23 games. And Larry Smith always likes to block punts. In fact, in Arizona, in seven years, he blocked 28 kicks. So something may happen here today. How deep is he? What is he? He's, he's 11 yards. That's where he was warming up. That's pretty close. Got a lot of foot on it, though. Runs Lockwood back inside the 20. And he gets back across the 20, and that's a heck of a punt by Helkowski. 58 yards, and Lockwood lost two trying to bring it back. He leads the country in punting after one or two weeks of the season with an average of uh, 51 yards. That won't hurt his average a bit. Southern California will go to work. The ball is resting just over the 20. The score is 7-7. 10.52 to go if the clock is right at the first half. Wallace and Wellman now, both wide with the bottom of the picture. Oh, the left-hander, Marinovich, who gives it to the up man, the fullback. And the fullback in this series is Scott Lockwood, who is also a tailback. I asked Larry Smith yesterday if uh, all that noise I'd been listening to coming over the practice wall was him uh, being a little tougher on his young team than normal, and he said this. <laughs> oh, I don't think we are. In fact, I think I'm going easier on him. Be quiet. I mean, in practice and the physical stuff. But the mental part is where you really, I think, if the young team, see, I think this time of the year, every team is searching for their identity. I think there are a lot of very average football teams across the country. And uh, I think that's why you see so many upsets early in the season. And I think this team has the potential to be an excellent football team. But on the other hand, it has the potential to go the other way, too. And the Penn State defensive bunch now beginning to knock folks around. Uh, getting a little tougher as the time goes on. They chase Marinovich, and he had to unload it. And he again sort of lobbed that ball back into the middle of the field where uh, uh, the Urbans brought it down. But uh, you, you keep throwing it down in the yeah. middle like that, and somebody's going to take it away from you. Especially with that much loft on it. Uh, yep. You know, you, you want to, as a quarterback, you want to complete every pass that you call. It's just not possible, and, and if you throw that ball that softly into the middle of the field, more often than not, bad things are going to happen. Third down and six. <laughs> On the dead run, Johnny Morton, a red shirt freshman out of Florence, California, for a Southern California first down. They've got speed. I think it just shows, Keith, the, the confidence with which Southern Cal has in their passing game now and in Marinovich. He has really matured from last year. Really one of the leaders, only a sophomore, but one of the leaders on this ball club. The two tight ends have scored both touchdowns. Golden for Penn State and Griffin for Southern California. First down, Trojans midfield. Marinovich rolls out, throws. Threw a bad pass to Griffin. Frank Griffin, the tight end, is out there all by himself, and Todd just simply threw a bad pass. You're exactly right. Just before throwing, he knows it. Good call, though, on first down. Play action pass. The Washington Huskies playing at Purdue today. They will be the next opposition of the conference opener for USC next week up in Seattle. It's always a tough trip. Yep. Except it's early in the season. Even if it's wet, it won't be cold. Marinovich has some time, gets it off, and is caught by Travis Hanna. Great catch by Hanna. He just simply took it away from Humphrey. Brunovich had four receivers to this side. He looked at all four of them. He wants Hannah to go deep. He looks back to the center. He says, I'm going to throw this ball away. And then while I'm doing it, I'm going to give Hannah a chance to catch it. There it is. Good call. The official right on top of it. Only one foot needs to be inbound in college. 
Ball is marked just short of the 15-yard line. First down, Southern California, trying to break the 7-7 tie. That's Lockwood at fullback, slashing runner out of Colorado, and he's down to the 13. Scott had a hand injury a year ago, and it really took away most of the fun of the season for him. He's from Boulder, where the University of Colorado is located. Colorado Player of the Year a few years ago. Yep. Really a good player with a broken thumb last year. Was redshirted. He really messed up the hand when he broke that thumb. Second down and seven. Marinovich's pass thrown with some bite on it, and it's complete down to the eight-yard line. Caught by Johnny Morton, his second catch. You know, you look around and you, you talk about these wideouts and you think, well, you know, that's probably a little bitty guy out there running around. Well, they're not. Uh, Morton, six feet, 190. Scott, 6'2", 200. Uh, Wallace is the smaller of the bunch, I guess. 6'1", 175. Wellman is 5'9", 175. And Hannah would be the smallest at 5'8", 160. But the rest of them got good size. They can flat run. Third down and three. Little shovel pass downfield. Good idea, but the direction was poor in trying to get it to Gary Wellman. He was running hard to his right, being a left-hander. He couldn't square his shoulders, so he just kind of shoveled it down. Well, he had his, had his first down, but he yep. wanted more. He had yep. more time. He was outside containment. Yep. He could have flipped it for the first down, but he wanted the touch and ends up having to kick a field goal. You see Rodriguez pretty good from inside the 30, huh? One of the big differences in these two ball clubs, Keith, are their field goal kickers. This will be a 26-yarder. That O'Hara will put it down. And Rodriguez left foot it right down the middle of the road, and the Trojans go to the lead. 10 to 7. is over. We're talking a brand new season of your funniest home videos yet. Grab the neighbors, wake the kids, and wake your neighbor's kids because America's Funniest Home Videos is back. Then the last continue from the producer of America's Funniest Home Videos comes America's Funniest People. America's Funniest Hour begins tomorrow night. The Bronx have set their sights. All my rowdy friends are here on Monday night. Ugh. It'll be kind of interesting to see as the day wears on how much that particular possession will mean in the outcome of this ball game. Both teams have moved the ball well. In fact, only uh, three possessions for both S USC and Penn State. Point is, uh, Marinovich had his first down. He just right. keeps it. He's got his first down. To make it first and goal. Here's Joe. 25th season. And as I said, we came on the air, a statesman for his profession, and he is. Really is. He really cares about the university, about college football, about the young men. There are a few of those around. Bo Schembechler, we lost him. I guess he's going to be uh, watching his first Michigan ball game on TV later on. Halftime, Roger Twybell will have day scores and highlights. We'll have a report from Beth Ruak on the, some of the juniors who went into the NFL draft and didn't get drafted. And it's, I hope the young people in the future will take the lesson. Uh, there was uh, several people out here in the West Coast that didn't get picked. And I mean some good ones, uh, really good football players. If, if they'd have stayed in school, probably been first, no worse than second rounder in a year or so. But they're now out of school, and uh, they knew the rules, they knew the chance, and you're not going to get any judge to overturn it. I don't see how it's possible. Gary Brown returns it. He's loose. He had a 95-yarder against Texas, and he almost got loose on that one before Grant Runniston brought him down. 39 yards on that return. Both teams have had special team problems 
in their first ball games, and they've also had some good things happen on special teams, and Brown, who leads the nation in all-purpose yards, that's kickoff returns, punt returns, catching the ball and running with it from scrimmage, puts the uh, Penn State Nittany Lions in great position. Leroy Thompson will lose a yard on that carry. This is the best starting point for a Penn State procession here in the first half, and we've got a lot of time remaining. The clock running at 7.50 to go in the first half. Ball resting at the 44-yard line, second down, 11. for Chip LaBarra. Excuse me, Chip LaBarca, sophomore from Fayville, New Jersey. Obviously a speedster. And LaBarca was on the dead run, but the coverage wasn't that bad. Well, that man there calls the plays. Paterno is the uh, offensive play caller, and he said yesterday, he says, I don't like the nickel and dime stuff. I want to throw it downfield. I want the defense to feel it out when we throw it. Needed a half a step on that one. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Don Gibson, I think, number 92, was the man that slapped to the side. Well, Keith, when you're 6'5", you shouldn't get many passes knocked back in your face as Sack is. It just tells you that he's uh, telegraphing his throws and his release needs to be a little bit quicker. BYU now trying to dodge a bullet at home against Washington State. Come back now to trail by on the seventh. Lockwood and Larry Wallace are the deep people for USC now as uh, Helkowski is in to punt on fourth down for the Lions. Oh, they almost got it. Almost got it. He's only 11 yards back of the snapper, and that just ain't a whole lot of room. And you see number 56, Ryan Tulio slapping the ground because he thought he was going to get one. Let's take another look at it. Tulio came unblocked. Came unblocked. As you said, he's only 11 yards deep. Usually a team is 14 yards deep. Take a look over here. Watch him as he's going to come free. Tulio. Right there, it's just a, it's, a, it's not, that's not the kicker's fault. Nope. That's just a, a mix-up in the protection up front. Yep. Lucky. 26-yarder. That damages that first punt of 62. Trojans get it from the 31 and run it in the middle with Ricky Irving. Ricky is 5'8", 190 pounds. And uh, we've gone to the shirt sleeves. I hope you'll excuse us on that because it's, it's a warm place. You know what that means, uh, Keith, okay. with uh, Southern Cal almost blocking that punt is that the special teams of Southern Cal, the coaches, understand the, the blocking and the protection of Penn State on their punts, and they've gotten into their system, and they know now how they can get in there and maybe block a punt later in the ballgame. Second down and eight with 640 play in the first half. bounced out of there and was going to run to the other side, but the whistles have blown the play dead as Guganis and Mark Flake. New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey. There's uh, 24 of them on this year's squad. Last year, there were 32. Guganis is shaken up. And, uh, Dick Anderson is back on the Penn State staff, and I submit to you that if uh, those uh, 24 New Jersey fellows were up at Rutgers. Dick Anderson would still be up there. Dick Anderson, the former head coach at Rutgers for the last six or seven years. That's Dick right there. He was over at Penn State 10, 12 years and uh, went to Rutgers. But the biggest problem you have, Rutgers, of course, is the State University of, of New Jersey. You can't keep him at home. Yeah. Yeah. They go wandering off to Nebraska and Miami and Places like that, and certainly Pitt and Penn State. Aren't all three quarterbacks on the Penn yep. State roster today yep, yep. from New all Jersey? All three. All three of them. Southern 
California is four out of six on third down conversions, and they're looking at one right now. Third down and eight. Marinovich out of the shotgun. Got some heat from the backside. The pass is deflected. Incomplete. They'll have to put it. And it was uh, Tony Madison looping in. He is from Fairview, New Jersey, and he got a piece of it. Take a look at it as if you were standing on the sideline. This is the angle that the coaches and players on the side have. So, <laughs> some of you think the quarterback can see clearly all the time, and there's a lot of bodies in between him and the receivers sometimes. Big bodies. Who are intent on mayhem. Bondale. <laughs> Beauty. 20-yard line for Tyson Thomas. Down at the 22, 48-yard punt, 8-yard return. Jack Aroot now on the field. Keith, you were talking about the great coaching that Joe Paterno, the staff that he's assembled. Well, there's one man that's up in the coach's box high above this stadium that a couple of years ago was calling the shots for the Florida Gators. Then due to the NCAA allegations, he retired or actually resigned from that job. That's Galen Hall. Galen, believe it or not, is now at Penn State going for his master's degree in physical education. The man that called him and said, why don't you become an unpaid graduate assistant so you can stay in football? Joe Paterno. Galen was the quarterback at Penn State. He was sort of round in, but he was a winner. First down, 28. Leroy can't find any place to run. Got Ross, nailed him down. Could be a loss on the play of a little bit. Half a yard or so. Scott Ross in the middle of your picture. Takes on the fullback gash. And that's how you play inside linebacker right there. You've got to fight off the blocker. Everybody's going to be a... Somebody's going to be blocking every defensive guy. And you go to make the tackle. Blocker gets it away down the middle. And it is incomplete. And David Daniels is howling at the back judge for a flag. But won't get it. Howard McCowan covering on the play. Southern California has given the Penn State running game nothing so far, Bob. 11 carries and only 9 yards. Well, that's their history. They've been stingy in the past as you take a look at Marinovich on the sideline. Last year, they were the toughest team to run on in the nation. Saka is now old for his last five passes after starting out very hot. SC leading 10 to 7 at 509 to go in the first half. See this one, but I mean it's uh, it's Major League coverage right here. Well, Paterno has continued to be problems. It has problems with turnovers. To the left of your screen, there's 26. That's Daniels. Makes the reception. It was the uh, wide receiver. This corner knocked it out. Corner was knocked out by Salmon. Yeah. Salmon. Yep. Take yeah. a look at the Broke pass the protection. Seven. Good protection. Yeah, Salmon knocked it out. Tulio recovered. And Southern California's got it first down at the Penn State 35-yard line. And Marinovich back trying to catch his chip. Loops it high. Well, was there. Incomplete. And that's a fine play. I mean, an outstanding play by the Penn State defender, Mark Graham. Number 17. That may be the first play of the uh, game that Graham is in on. Penn State will substitute very uh, uh, readily. They don't uh, have any qualms about putting a guy that uh, has not played in uh, at any time in the ball game. They feel very good about their depth, and that time of blitz, he was out there by himself, one-on-one, -on -one, and he made the play. The pass was a little bit underthrown. Yeah, if it's a little longer, yeah. it's a touchdown. Second down and ten. This time, the pass is thrown hard. It goes to Morton, and Morton, who's caught three now, reels it in for a Trojan first down inside the 30. No, it's not a first down. It'll not be a first down. It's a, just inside the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. 
that really impressed with this kid Morton, just a red shirt freshman. He was uh, coming into the ball game about the fourth or fifth wide receiver. Oklahoma. Ooh, look at that. Wow. That's called a tap dance. Hmm. Our centers might be uh, better than we know. Lorenovich's pass is in a way down the middle in complete Wellman, the intended receiver. He had a man open in the end zone. Wallace, the wide receiver, was wide open. What do you think of that, Bob? 21-17 count. Miami was out here last week to play BYU, went home and had to come all the way back out to play California. I think the uh, I think they're a little bit uh, airsick. <laughs> Didn't, uh, they lost that great defense. Did yep. Miami? Yep, they did. 46 yard field goal try for Rodriguez. It's up and it's on its way, and it's uh, good enough in length, and it's good enough in direction. So Quinn Rodriguez pops it through there, and the lead for USC goes to 13 to 7. 3.59 to go in the first half of play. Monday night, John Elway and the Denver Broncos will uh, take on the Kansas City Chiefs at Mile High Stadium in Denver on ABC's Monday Night Football. Live coverage at 9 Eastern Time. Denver opened the season over here against the Raiders and got beat. Johnny Elway just about expired. He was so hot, so hot down on the floor of the stadium, and they chased him all day. He must have run 40 miles. Kansas Raiders City. defense really got after Kansas City with a big win over Minnesota. Yep. Well, they've got that Christian Okoya who's developed into one of the great running backs in the NFL. He came out a little Azusa Pacific down the road here, you know. And it's, uh, Marty Schottenheimer's done a great job with yeah. that team. He's a good coach. Marty's a good guy. I like him. 3.59 to go in the first half. 13 to 7, Southern California over Penn State. Gary Brown and Leroy Thompson will be your deep people for Penn State. And Runnerstrom will tee it up. Brown popped one a little while ago on the last time he had a chance with it, a 39 yards. And uh, he, he brought some uh, short breath to one side of the stadium here when he almost got loose with it. Grand Runnerstrom hits it. Going to Brown, nine yard line. Got a hole in the middle, but that hole is plugged rather quickly, and he goes down at the 31-yard line, and there Penn State will go to work. In the first quarter, USC went to the lead on a five-yard catch by Frank Griffin, tight end. Penn State responded to tie at 7-7 as Al Golden reeled in an eight-yarder for a touchdown. Then Quinn Rodriguez, a 26-yard field goal to make it 10-7 Trojans, and uh, just a moment ago, a 46-yarder to make it 13-7. He needs a ten foot back up. Principal offensive show so far for Penn State. That pass intended for Terry Smith, and it is no good. Miami back to the lead in that game up at Berkeley. The defensive line that the Hurricanes had last year was may have been one of the best in, ever in college football. Yeah, one of the guys on that uh, defensive front was a fellow named Mark, Greg Mark. He's from New Jersey. To continue on that point, how many good high school players come out of there but go elsewhere? Thompson. It just isn't any place to go for the running game. That's Gibson and Hartsacker nailing him down. Gibson's the man who locked his legs. Chris Allen is the defensive coordinator for the Trojans and I was kidding him the other day. I said, after you lost those nine starters and four guys off of that team in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, we're going to find out if you can coach. He's got a lot of young players, but good talent. Third down and eight. Back up, hums it, pass caught by Thompson. First down 
as a Trojan 49. Number 56 was the man that got burned, Brian Tulio. He was trying to cover him coming out of the backfield, and the pass was so hot and well thrown by uh, Saka that uh, Brian couldn't handle it. Well, that's, I think, Keith, what we're talking about. Penn State needs more short passes to their backs. Throw it short, let them use their speed and ability to turn a short gain into a big gain. Saka having a fine first half. First down, Southern California 49-yard line. Brown is the tailback. He's got the ball. And down he goes. And talking with Joe yesterday after he arrived from State College, talking about what happened to them in the ball game last week against Texas and really boil it down to an experience. You know, they, they got to grow up. I mean, and the only way to grow up is you play good football teams and you learn from them. We have a lot of kids that really don't know how to win a big game yet. And I, I think that was obvious against Texas. We had some kids that could have made some plays that didn't make them. Notice he said, yet. Saka rolls away from the pressure and uh, throws it away. David Daniels was out there, but uh, he was well covered. And rather than take a chance, get rid of him. And besides that, Mike Salmon uh, was a cornerback blitzing from the field side, so he had to roll from there and uh, get rid of it. Call it third down and eight. all over Leroy Thompson. Mark Syker has made several good plays today. He has an, a, some, somewhat of an identity problem because he has red hair just like Todd Marinovich and he's often asked for his autograph as Todd and he says, well, says, I just go ahead and give it. Since I tell him I'm not, he says, are you really? Are you sure? He says he ends up just going ahead and give him the autograph. He's here. <laughs> sure is. Hunting time. Elkowski. Last time they almost got him. Burn the clock. Take five yards. Timeouts remaining. State has three. USC two. Uh, Larry Smith uh, doesn't want him to take the penalty. Much celebrated Hollywood sign sits up at the foothills. People keep painting, stealing, various and sundry other things. It's pretty clear Arguing day out about here. It. Pretty clear day, isn't it, partner? Out here? Oh uh, yeah. Huh? Not bad. Okay, okay. Kick it away. Fair catch. Twelve yard line. Scott Blockwood called for the fair catch at 1.31 to go in the first half. Let's pause five seconds for our ABC station. Southern California leading Penn State by a score of 13 to 7. Trojans have the ball. First down at their own 12. Two field goals and a touchdown. But there has been a considerable amount of offense uh, despite the relatively low score. Lockwood and Irvin's line up now behind Marinovich. Double wide top of the picture. Give the ball to Ricky Irvin. Finds a little daylight on the right side. Rolling along in behind Mark Tucker will pick up about five yards. Fourth quarter now, BYU is out to a 29-7 lead at one point, and Colorado has taken the lead from Illinois. That is back in Champaign and is one of our other telecasts today. That's Morton going in motion, and the horse will stop it. Hold the phone, penalty coming up. Frank Griffin, the tight end, I think, was wandering off. Pick number 54 walking around there is Lou Benfati, a sophomore from Green Pond, New Jersey. 
Number 25, that's Willie Thomas from Carl Springs, Florida. That's down by Fort Lauderdale. Dead by five. Ball start on the offense. Still second down. Yep. Tight end. Griffin wandering around. Probably missed the snap count. Sometimes hard to hear. Sometimes you get slapped upside the head to play before and you don't <laughs> you're, you're, you're not counting too good. <laughs> That's right. Second down and ten. It wipes out the five-yard pickup by Irvin. Give it back to rookie. You've got daylight. Bounces to the outside. Penalty flag as he is tackled. So what do we got? Do we have a face mask or do we have a clip? He got a hole on the project. Ricky's having a hard time uh, this season because he had 100 yards against Syracuse and lost four very, very late in the game, wound up with 96. He had, uh, what, nine games over 100 yards a year ago. So sure did. Having trouble getting led, to the 100. Didn't led he? the Pac-10 in rushing in 89, averaging 116 yards a game, was the Rose Bowl MVP. Well, he's 12 for 34 today, but he just lost 15 yards right here on yeah. on, uh, on uh, two penalties. And that was the, the best run that Southern Cal has put together today. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. You know, you're talking about Irvin's as you take a look at him right there. Not only together today. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty. Still second down. You know, you're talking about Irvin's as you take a look at him right there. Not only is he an excellent runner, led the Pac-10 in rushing, but caught 39 passes last year for Southern Cal. That is the most ever by a running back in Southern Cal history. A little swing pass, uh, sideline, open, open field screen here. Yes, sir. Scored last uh, two weeks ago against Syracuse on the screen pass. Second down, time just about gone in the first half. They've loaded up the right side. They give it to Irvin instead of throwing it to him. And the ball come rolling around, but it's uh, down. Plays dead. I think he got that ball back, Keith. I think it was out and it came back to him. Time out, Penn State. They stopped the clock with 11 seconds play in the first half. Lions have one more. Southern California electing not to spend any time out here. They lead 13 to 7 and probably uh, just as happy to go to the clubhouse and get a cold drink of water. Leading by 6. 13 to 7 doesn't is not an offensive score at all but what's happening here is, is, is the struggle is still going on down in the trenches as to who's the boss. For sure. And it's pronounced. You know it's a good football game. It's two Two solidly coached football teams, fundamentals, playing well in their second game. Still a few mistakes, not a lot, but two well-played, well-coached teams. Smith, in his fourth year at USC, has had pretty good success. He's won the Pac-10 three times in a row, went to the Rose Bowl, won the Rose Bowl for the first time last year. Two-time Pac-10 Coach of the Year. You know, he's... Uh... You know, Joe with his uh, his demeanor and Larry with his are kind of they're different personalities but they both give the impression that they if you just look at them from the distance that they're kind of kind gentle guy they're not yellow so not yellers and screamers but, but they're they, cranky but but <laughs> but they know how to catch the uh, attention of yep. their young men That's right they will get after your shirt tail if you you, you both mess it around solid program third down Nope, they're going to run out the clock. They give it to Scott Lockwood. And Lockwood's up to about the 20. And uh, that ought to do it. And time runs up. So at halftime at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, Southern California, 13. And hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Penn State, I think, has called a timeout for the second or so to play. Yeah, they called timeout. They they were requesting timeout. Yeah, they called it. Joe says six seconds. We got six seconds. Well, the clock operator, uh, uh, whoever was running the clock, uh, didn't get it. They're going to give him three. He got a Southern Cal shirt on. He said, I'll keep this sucker running. <laughs> <laughs> so 
now it's fourth down, and you don't figure that Southern California is going to punt it. They're just going to take a snap and sit down with it. And that'll do it. Well, that'd be the smart thing to do. Now that you just want to make sure you run three seconds off the clock. The clock will start when the ball is touched. They're drawing up something over there. I'm sure they don't want to punt it. Well, um, let me say something here, but I have not mentioned it. Uh, the fact that O.J. McDuffie, who is one of the outstanding wideouts for uh, Penn State, uh, is not here. And uh, he's hurt. So, uh, you know, that's, that's another factor in the Penn State offense. That's, uh, he, he's, a, he's an important personality in this whole scheme, and he's not here. There's the man that controls the clock. Well, they got the punter in. I, but I'd be very surprised if he punched it. Of course, you can snap it through the end zone. All kinds of bad things can happen. He just snaps it out. That, that makes sense. Snap it to the up man. And he takes off. And he is knocked out of bounds. That's Jeff Cuff, the inside linebacker. I thought for a minute that he might take off down the sidelines and score. Lord of mercy, with that sent to the, <laughs> to the catalog, huh? Woo. It's halftime. Let us go down on the field and join our colleague, Jack Aroot. On a clear day in Los Angeles, it is 13 to 7. Southern California leading Penn State at halftime, and here are some of the numbers. First half statistics. The thing that's interesting to me is the rushing yards for Penn State. Only 11 yards rushing and 148 yards passing for Tony Sack. In fact, he's out past Todd Marinovich. And the one turnover for Penn State. Individually for Penn State, their leaders. Uh, Sack is 10 of 18 and one touchdown. Thompson's their leading rusher and Daniels, their leading receiver. Southern Cal, Marinovich is 11 of 19 and 124 with a touchdown. Urbans has 45 yards. And the receivers, Wellman has three for 39. Again, you see an absence of uh, any rushing uh, by uh, Southern California, and it may be told right there, huh? Defensive leaders, Penn State, Gibbons, the outside linebacker, has five. Uh, and McKenzie, the other outside linebacker, both sophomores, Leading the way. Of course, the uh, Penn State running game shut down, too, by the defense of Southern Cal. Pace with six tackles, and Salmon playing an outstanding ball game. Travis Hanna and Curtis Conway are deep now for Southern California. They deferred. They wanted to toss. They get the second half kickoff. Craig Fayek will kick it off with Penn State. Very much in doubt is this issue. 13 to 7, Southern California leading. This possession right here might be pretty big. Very high, high kick taken by Hannah back at the five. Bounces off a tackler and bounces his way past the 30. There it'll be marked first down Southern California. Here's a look at what SC did with their possessions in the first half. On the first one, they took 16 plays for a score. Third possession, they scored. Fifth possession they scored, and then the last one right there before halftime. Same unit, the start of the ball game is out there now with the Spears at fullback, Urban's at tailback. The wideouts are Wallace and Wellman with Marinovich taking the snaps at quarterback from Opolsky. This is where he likes to throw the ball. Heavy on the wide receiver. Down the middle, got a man. First down, just across the 45 yard line, Larry Wallace. That's the way for a wideout to go down and uh, take the ball down the middle, Bob, and take it sitting down. You don't well, get beat on. Well, it's the speed that we talked about, the wide receivers, as BYU has gone ahead again. But the speed from the SC wide receivers is going to get them open downfield. They run the, the safeties and the corners off and then square it off into the middle of the field. Time call right here for a moment as a Penn State player is shaken up on the play. It's one of the big guys. I don't think fatigue has entered into it at all because uh, uh, it, it's not that hot today. And let's spend a moment with Jack Aroot. 
Well, Keith, just like the first half, the mood in the locker room was very businesslike. On the Penn State side, Joe, Coach Joe Paterno cautioned against the fact that on first down, they weren't making the necessary yardage, putting their backs to the wall in second and third down situations. Meanwhile, over in the USC locker room, the one thing that Larry Smith told his charges was, we've got to play better, and we've got to go for a big play. We can't settle for three points like we did in the first half. Lubin Foddy came out of the ball game, and Tony Matisic has replaced him. Uh, Lockwood goes to fullback for Southern California. Swing pass out to Irvins. He cuts back away from the traffic. Finds a little working room, not enough to write home about. He, in fact, he just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. He'll have at the most a yard. But he was trying to cut against the green there and find a crack where there wasn't one. But it's a, it's, a, it's a nice play. I like it because you give an opportunity for your fast back to do something with it. Take a look at the completion distribution of Lorinovich. Nine to the wide receivers, only one to the tight end, and only three to the running backs, and that's for a minus one yard. So big yardage is going to the wide receivers. Martin is in and Wallace is out on the boundary side. Receiver position. Lorinovich back to throw it. He's got Martin wide open. Drops the ball, incomplete, forward pass, didn't happen. Perry came over and belted him, and he never really got a handle on it, but he had him a long time before he saw him. Well, you see it. Brunovich had to wait till he cleared past 47 right there. That's right. And when you wait that long, then the defensive back is right there to hit you right when you're catching the football. Yeah, he was, defense. he was wide open, though, before he got in the neighborhood of 47, and Todd was still in the process of trying to set up. Before he hit the right, the yep. 47, he could have should have thrown it. But when you wait that long, then, then there's a bunch of guys yep. coming at you. And they really hit him. Shotgun now on third down and 10. They burned the clock. Five-yard penalty, still right. third down. Second half, what does Penn State do on the first, third, and long situation? Look at these linebackers, these four here. Watch them as they're all going to blitz. They must have talked in the, in the locker room. We need to put more pressure on him. Look at the linebackers. Eight man coming, only three deep. They talked about in the locker room was, we need to put pressure on Marinovich. First, third, and long. Here they come, and they look like they may do it again. Third and 15, good time. <laughs> Number 99, Rich McKenzie. Back on the 32-yard line. Well, no put that time, but McKenzie got it done on his own. Sue Fraterno has helped with the tutoring of that youngster. He's settling in and finding a place. No pressure. Long, low driving kick to Tyson Thomas. Back across the 15 to the 16 yard line. 53 yard punt, 11 yard return. Orisaka from Del Rattle, New Jersey. Going to throw. Keep coming. Breaks the tackle. Pass away. Wide open Sam Gash. Big play line. First down, Southern California, 36 yard line. Craig Hartsacker had Saka but couldn't hold him. He picks up 38 yards. Well, Hartsacker's going to come from the right side on a little twist. I tell you, Sack is just making all kinds of plays. Shakes loose, and now the defensive backs in the secondary aren't responsible to cover that long when they see something going up there. Gash gets himself open, and Sack makes the big play. First down for the Lions, and he rolls it to the right, wide side of the field, and throws behind the intended receiver. Rick sails the tight end. Bales was in between defenders and was available, but he's on the dead run like that. It fired 
You know, I keep hearing uh, people say that, well, he throws better on the run. I don't believe that. Well, he's thrown pretty well anywhere you got him today. He's well, that's right. A few, but, but still, uh, uh, throwing on the dead run with a 270 pounder breathing down your neck doesn't necessarily help your accuracy. <laughs> the 32 before he's brought down. Well, the Brigham Young Cougars have about to salt that one away, it looks like. I'd be kind of surprised if anybody beats him the rest of the way until they get in the bowl. So Wyoming looks like they might be a pretty tough customer in our white concert this year. It's third down. Call it six. For Penn State, 13 to 7, Southern California leading. Lost it toward the end zone. Incomplete, intended for David Daniels. And it'll bring up fourth down. Mike Salmon covering on the play. We've had a change since the outset of the ball game in the defensive secondary. And the movement of Pace and Holmes and Salmon and company. And McCowan is in there, and uh, Holmes, I guess, is out of it, isn't he? Right now. Well, Holmes was the starter at the beginning of the second half, but he was out of there most of the first half after yeah, he's, starting. He's back right now. Yeah. Go to punt. Kowalski trying to push it. That'll go in the end zone. It'll be Southern California's ball first down up to 20. 11.35 to go third quarter. The Trojans leading in the ball game 13-7. think that there'll be a little payback coming when it's oh uh, well we saw that two years ago yeah they uh, got him then yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. southern california's ball first down now at their own 20 they lead 13 to 7. let's see what's been concocted in the clubhouse pitch to the tailback ain't nothing different there pick up of two yards on the play and todd berger the nose guard stacks it up Dodgers ain't home. They're playing in Cincinnati. Won big last night behind Fernando Valenzuela in a Grand Slam home run by Cal Daniel. Who really enjoyed it since uh, he had started the season in Cincinnati. But Reds have been a good ball club all season long. Lubin Potty, who was shaken up earlier, has come back to the ball game for Penn State. Hand off is to Scott Lockwood out of the fullback position, and Scott's up across the 25 near the 26. Dodgers, uh, of course, really need to sweep in Cincinnati if they are to become a viable factor and uh, to close down the National League West. Oh, it's hard to sweep Cincinnati. Mm. Lou Pinella there to his managing for the first season and done a fine job. Weldon to the bottom of the picture, Morton to the top of the picture, Irvin to the lone remaining back, third down and about four and a half. Marinovich has got nobody to throw to. Now he unloads it and it's incomplete. Morton has come back to try to, Yanni Jackson it was, and come back to try to help him out because Penn State was about to hog tie Marinovich and hang him from a tall tree. And there was just absolutely nobody available. Good coverage and good pressure by Penn State defensively. It's the big series, the first series out on the field after halftime. And Penn State wins it. So Dale is in the punt now. get it to turn over. Kind of wobbles down to the 35-yard line where Tyson Thomas makes a fair catch. 39 yards. But here's Jack Aruth. Keith, Tracy Marinovich here is Todd's older sister, and she's a teacher in Palmdale, California. And Tracy, you enlisted your little brother to come to school and uh, talk to your kids and get them excited about football. 
the kids all year waited for Todd to come, and it was the highlight of the year. It really was. And it was a good opportunity to get the kids linked up with how sports and academics is connected. And they just loved it. Todd was great with the kids. All right, how tough is it to be the sister of a guy from Sports Illustrated? We'll have to find out later. Palmdale. 35, 30, just over the 35-yard line. And a penalty flag as uh, we get a penalty. Well, I think Brian O'Neill here is starting to wander around a little bit. Jack, you got something else? Well, let's get the answer. Your, your brother's been on this cover of Sports Illustrated, all this TV coverage. Is it tough to be the older sister of a hero? Not at all. It's great. I hear it everywhere I go. Are you Todd Marinovich's sister? Yes, and I'm proud of it. It's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> and Keith, she's a USC graduate as well. Of course she is. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, the, the, Marv's not going to have any truck with anybody in that family going in place else. <laughs> Saka back to throw it. He wants Daniels. He goes underneath. And the pass is incomplete. And the pass was intended for O'Neill, the fullback. So the BYU Cougars finally win over the Washington State Cougars by 14. But it wasn't easy. Got the wake up call a little late, didn't they? I want to I'm gonna go home and call Lavelle. <laughs> what he got to say after that, he's probably winded. <laughs> 9.57 to go in the third quarter. Sakovac steps away from the pressure and hits his man. That's Brown, and Gary Brown is wrestled down at the Southern California 46-yard line. First down, Penn State. Saka is getting some time now, and he's making it work. One of the reasons, top of your screen, number 64 is McCartan, Matt McCartan. He came over from SMU three years ago when the school was put on probation in their football program, got the death penalty. Matt McCartan, the only returning uh, starting lineman in that offensive front. O'Neill carries and gets maybe three down to about the 43 yard line well i called mcdaniel's name once early on i called gibson's name twice rouget once so that tells you the penn state offense is front doing a pretty good job well they are but they're not moving them out they're not penn state is not getting a lot of rushing yardage it's the linebackers for sc that are making the tackles but penn state whenever they're making the yardage is going through the air 11 yards rushing at halftime Sackers pass down the sideline for Brown, just a little high. Gary was walking the tight rope and couldn't get the ball and stay in at the same time. It's an excellent throw. Throws it over the defensive back's head. You can't put it any better. Receiver had both feet in bounds, just catch the ball. Saka now is 12 for 24, 205 yards and a touchdown. We've had no interception so far. Pressure coming, Salmon, and hits him as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. Defending downfield, Calvin Holmes. They took Calvin out in the first half. Looked like it made him mad. Well, they wanted to put pressure on Saka because he's hurting him. Take a look over here, number 24. That's the defensive back. That's the corner, Salmon. You don't normally get corners and strong safeties blitzing. He forced the throw early and the incompletion. Elkowski in the punt. Ball rolling around. Penn State's going to kill it inside the 10. Lockwood was back there. And it looks like it was a tail dragger headed for the end zone, but it didn't. It stopped on the eight yard line. It's first down, Southern California. Southern California now starts with its goal line and its back first down from their own eight yard line. They lead by six, 13 to seven. Eight minutes and 41 seconds to play in the third quarter. Marinovich throws. He's got Wilman. He's got a first down out across the 25. Make it the 27. And Penn State's kind of lucky in a way. He didn't get six. 
They had uh, Mark Graham and Darren Perry back there. But if uh, Marinovich has a little more time and they hook up, July. Well, both quarterbacks are getting more time by getting outside the pocket. They're they're breaking containment and they're getting out on the corner. And they're they're, they're both throwing the ball very well. Now they got some real estate on which to run around. And Wallace goes in motion and they give it to Irvin. Honda Scholar Athlete this week. Brought to you by American Honda. Proud to support amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Greg Fry, the senior quarterback from Ohio State University. 11 of 23 in his opener for 149 yards. The win over Texas Tech, and they won again today. So Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Ohio State University in the name of Greg Fry. Great point, 3.1 in business. Marinovich yeah. back steps up, gets his pass away, caught. Wellman pulled it down, and Marinovich was sandwiched, hammered, but he had just enough on it to get it to Wellman. McKenzie was the guy that was beating on him. Marinovich did the small things there that you don't really teach quarterbacks, and that is move around within the pocket just to buy a little bit more time. Your protection all the time is not going to be perfect. You may need, you need to slide to your left or right, and you just more and often than not, you feel that. You just don't see it. You feel it. Well, we're getting a spot of water. First down for the Trojans. The ball is at the 37. They lead 13 to 7 here in the third quarter. We got two tight ends over here at the bottom of the picture now, and Irvin's just trying to go that way to cut it back into the middle. And Willie Thomas, Jim Dieter. Dieter got a piece of him as he went by, and Willie Thomas was there to fill the hole. Really, for the first time today, it looked like Irvin's was going to break down. For the most part, Southern Cal rushing has been shut down. Both teams defensively have done well stopping the other team's running attack. D'Onofrio, number 38. It's a leading returning tackler from last year's ball club and also led him in sacks last year with 11. Bullback, Spears. A little quick pop. Close to a first down. What you're seeing here, uh, Keith, is a tough physical ball game. Southern Cal has always been known offensively as a power eye running team. They like to run strong side behind their the big offensive linemen. And Penn State is shutting that down. They have always been known as a tough physical team. It was the first down near the 48 on the SC side of the field. Marinovich sees something, checks off, changes play, throws sideline. That's good to Wellman. That's the play to Gary Wellman. Caught the ball inside of Humphreys. Pick up is about six. It'll be second down four. Humphreys out now, Graham back in for Penn State. I wonder what Oklahoma did to Pittsburgh. We saw him last week against UCLA. That, that should make Terry Donahue feel a little bit better. They got some tough guys at Oklahoma. I mean, big, big guys along both the offense and defense and front are really good. This is Irving. And Ricky goes to the 35. Of Penn State. Both of these schools have had great running backs, and that's uh, right there. Here, take a look at USC, their tradition. Mike Garrett, Simpson, Anthony Davis, Ricky Bell, four Heisman Trophy winners in that group. That was an option play. The first time we've seen the option today, Keith, with Marinovich pitching it to Urban. We may see a, a little bit more of that because it seemed to work pretty well. 
Todd didn't really keep it very long. <laughs> I wasn't either. <laughs> Gets his pass off. Oh, yes. It's good. Wellman having a big day. Vernovich on the right to play action, and Wellman is going to go down and break out to the deep corner. Vernovich throws this ball a little bit late because he's got a problem back there with some white shirts, but this is why it kind of floats. Wellman does a nice job of getting his left foot inbounds before he steps out of bounds. Inside the 20, 16-yard line of Penn State, first down, Southern California. Marinovich pass, good. Not a lot of uh, yardage on it. But uh, Joel Scott takes it down to about the 11. Another five-second pause for our ABC stations to identify themselves. Second down and six. Southern California leading 13 to 7. 459 to play third quarter. And right now bidding for very big points in a tough ball game. Irvin's up the middle. Ricky Irvin's. He's inside the eight. He's got to go to the six. It'll be third down. They call him uh, Pinball Wizard. He's not very tall. 5'8", about 190. He's pretty fast at 4'4", on the 40, and he uh, can bench press over 365 pounds, so... It's huge legs. Really strong legs. Started at the beginning of last year, the number three tailback on the roster. Ball on the seventh, third and two. Option. Irvin. Depends on the spot. If he got the first down. It didn't take him long to get that option play back in there after it worked a little bit uh, on about three plays ago. D'Onofrio was over there trying to drag him back. But it looks like he got a pretty good spot. So the chains are coming on. You know, Penn State, which is headed for the Big Ten Conference, has ended its uh, Notre Dame series after the 92 season. They'll start, they'll play Iowa in 93. I wouldn't be surprised to see some more changes made in that area, too. Yeah. It'll be close. He got it. The 12th play in this possession coming up. It started back on their 8-yard line. Great drive. Whether they score or not, of course, you'd love to see a score if you're a Southern Cal fan. But just taking the ball down the field. Colorado must have gotten a safety there. It was 17-17 a while ago. And that champagne. Illinois was kicked sideways last week by Arizona in Tucson. First and goal. Fullback. Raul Spears to the four, two yards. To the four. Sports Arena is that uh, lemon meringue pie you see over there. Way back out yonder is uh, Palos Verdes. The blimp is Columbia. Carson, Johnny Craig up there flying it around. Goodyear blimps traveling over 100,000 miles every year all manner of events, including the major sporting events in North America. Second down goal. Marinovich is hit and taken down by... Marinovich on a keeper. Yeah, I thought it was 37. Lost one yard on the play. It was. Number 37, Ivory Gathers, an inside linebacker in goal line defense. And Ivory got his man. So it's third down and goal from the five, and USC's got to be making some changes here. Now, Yanni Jackson, 88, is a tight end. Griffin, 87, is the other tight end. Spears and Irvin stay there. Wellman goes wide to the top of the picture. 
Marinovich keeps it and takes off. He's got gathers after him and they're not going to give him the six on it. He hit the uh, pylon in the corner, knocked it loose. Uh, they're not going to give him the touchdown. Well, you see right there some of the competitiveness of Marinovich. He's going to stick the ball out and see if it breaks the plane of the end zone. It's awfully close. Did his knee hit first, or does the ball get in before he hits the ground? I think he's out of bounds. Just short. Oh, his knee's hit. Knee's hit first, and then the ball went over. See, his knees are down before the ball is across. Good call. Yep. Fourth down, they're going to go. This is a crusher drive. If it works, it'll be 92 yards. Urban in there. Touchdown. getting the ball deep so he can see where he wants to jump. D'Onofrio jumps where he thinks he's going. Urban sees him going, and he jumps away from him, jumps over the pile. What a big drive, a big momentum booster for the Trojans, and a tough one to overcome for Penn State. They're going for two. They go 92 yards, and they just hammered on them. So, you know, this is... It's a kind of a possession that's really gut checked out. Oh, yeah. It's, that's why I'm saying it's a big, a big uh, boost for Southern Cal to take it that far against a quality defense and then get it in the end zone. He got a timeout by Southern California. It's John Matzo, the uh, offensive coordinator. Take a look. Watch 38. D'Onofrio, he says, I'm jumping here, and Irvin sees that and jumps where the gap is to our right side of D'Onofrio, number 38. That's why guys like O.J. and Mike Garrett and on and on and Marcus Allen and those kind of people have had the careers they had here at Southern California because they do get the ball deeper and it gets them a chance right. to do this. It's a very key point. The quarterback should get the ball to him as deep as they possibly can. And there, another thing, good vision by the back. He saw where the men were, and he saw where the opening was. Ought to keep your head up. Take another look at it from, from D'Onofrio, 38. See what he sees. Ground level. Now, he just sees the top of him. Irvin's is only 5'8". He says, i got to commit before he jumps. That's just good effort by D'Onofrio and by Irvin. 15 plays, 92 yards, and it is 6 minutes and 31 seconds, according to our statistician, David Burnson. That is the second long drive, time-consuming drive, the first score for Southern California. They used over 8 minutes and just pounded it and ground it down the field. 2.10 to go in the third quarter now. They're going for two. Well, look, look for something out here on the flat, maybe a pick. We get this many receivers out here, two coming in and one going out, maybe. Well, man that made the play is number 35 for Penn State. We didn't let him get into the end zone. That's Derek Bona. Derek Bona. <laughs> Bona is a true freshman. And I think has about five or four or five tackles in the ball game today. Well, here's what they wanted to do, and this is what I kind of thought. Two men coming in to cause a traffic problem, and they want to get the ball to the inside man breaking out. He really is open if Marinovich would give him the ball. He breaks to the outside. If he hit him right now with the football, I think he could get in. But the corner hangs outside. Tom thinks better of it. Takes off running, he almost has an option set up where he pitch it back to the back. He may have a chance at it. Well, if he had, he'd, if he'd have pitched it to that trailer, he'd, yeah. 19 to 7, Southern California. Yeah. 
Every time I see that white horse running around the Coliseum, I think of Era Farsiga. I knew you were going to say that. Era hates that white horse. <laughs> Why? And I don't blame him. If I was wearing his shoes, I guarantee you I'd feel the same way. Why does, why does he hate it? Why does Era hate that horse? Oh, well, he had a couple of hard trips out here, and that horse wore out a pair of shoes, one of them. <laughs> to kick it off. Ball fell off the tee. We've still got 2.10 to go in the third quarter. Now it's Penn State's play. Penn State needs to come back with something in this next drive offensively. To Their deal. The counter. That's a very poor kick. Up at the 24-yard line where it is picked up by Brian Mazur. And a reserve fullback gets it up across near the 35. Let's go to Roger Twible. Roger. Thank you very much, Keith. You were right. There was a, a safety by Colorado. But before that third and goal, ball at the four, Jason Verdusco. He'll find Sean Wax. Look at that catch for the touchdown. That tied it at 17, but it's now 19-17. Let's go back to Keith. It looks like a grinder, too, doesn't it? All right. Let's see what Penn State can do here. Just short of the 35. They've got some field position to work with. They try one up the middle with Leroy Thompson. And, uh, there is no daylight behind that door. Second down and ten. Second pressure runs away from him. passes away intercepted. First interception of the day on either quarterback by Stephon Pace. And Pace is finally knocked down at the 48-yard line of Penn State. And a penalty flag. You know, might be a little rough stuff at the end of that play. Paterno has been plagued by mistakes last week, especially. We take a look at last week's miscues. 13 penalties. He had two kicks blocked. A block putt and a missed field goal, a lost fumble, and a, allowed an 88-yard kickoff return. It hasn't been as bad this week, but still some turnovers. Well, you got a holding call right here against Southern California after the interception. Ball remains with Southern Cal. Saka, back to pass, is being rushed from his left. Moves around, good mobility. That's Hartsiker again. Holding on the run back. We will administer clipping on the run back, 15 yards. First down. All right, you've uh, Southern California just gone 92 yards and 15 plays. The end of the third quarter is coming up. The Penn State defense has got to be getting a little weary. Well, they do. They need they need some 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 pickup from their offense, and uh, they're not getting it. Offensively, uh, Penn State has not done anything the last six times they've had the football. Craig Hartsiker, the outside linebacker, really caused that interception because he put pressure. One second. Toughest job in town is trying to rush a passer. And wears you right down to the nub faster than almost anything. The ball resting at the 29-yard line after that penalty. First down, Southern California. One twenty to go, third quarter. Ricky Irving. Three yards, that'll do it. Brett Wright, Darren Perry combining. Hayden Fry had all winter to sit around and stew and kick the barrel and wonder and fuss and worry. When you give Hayden a winter off to just sit and fuss, he can be a problem. And he may very well be a problem in that Big Ten this year with those Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Lockwood. Got to get it up to the over the, four, the 39, short of the 40 for their first down, and they're looking now at third and about four. And Missouri now. Missouri was handled last week. I mean, you see teams that are that have trouble scoring one week this season, and all of a sudden, boom. Now, Louisville went for 60 points last week. Kansas is showing Kansas some scored. Yeah, there's signs scored of life. Louisville opened the season out of San Jose with a 10-10 tie. I'm sure it didn't make hard very happy. Third and four. Quarter's over. So they got 15 minutes to go. And we'll be back with more from the Coliseum of Los Angeles after this message and a word from our ABC station. Down the street away is from the Coliseum where so many events of international note have occurred in times past. And we go down to the final period of play. Southern California leading 19 to 7 and they have the football on third down. Marinovich back to throw it, gets it away down the middle and it is caught. Frank Griffin, the tight end, who seemingly took the ball away from Brett Wright, and now the laundry is all over the place. And every, I think everybody got to throw their flag on that. That was a late hit by Moody, 72. Came flying over the pile. Third quarter, I think, the numbers in that period will tell you a lot about what's going on just what happened the time of possession for Penn State only three minutes and 20 seconds for 1140 USC had that long drive 24 plays to 11 for SC plus a turnover Sorting it out and placing the marker after the penalty, and it's going to go all the way back inside the 30-yard line, where it's going to be first down and 25. You know, Keith, looking at that time of possession for the third quarter, heavy in favor of Southern Cal. What that does is it wears down the Penn State defense. Although it doesn't appear as though. They, they've got any quit in them. No. Paterno has certainly uh, substituted very freely. You've got quit in you. You ain't wearing a white hat. And they're flying all over the place. You're not getting your mail at State College. You've you got some of that in. This is Ricky Irvin trying to bounce outside, and Ricky can't find any room. They're still running with gusto as uh, McKenzie and Bona. Get him down. Tulane uh, jumped all over the ponies after the ponies had won last week over Vandy. Well, Wyoming wins again. There's the State University of New Jersey beating Colgate. Jim Young going to quit at Army, going to retire after this season. <laughs> Throws to Wellman, Gary down the sideline. Pass the plate to Gary Wellman. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, you'll never know how close that was to being six. I mean, it was maybe a step, maybe less. Or it is, it wasn't. This is one of the areas where Southern Cal wanted to attack the Penn State defense was in the strong side flat, thinking that they could get some passing done out there because of the overshift in the run defense. The eight-man front for Penn State. Third down, starting at first and 25. It's now third down and eight. Marinovich is sacked back at the 35. Ivory gathered. Number 37, and I wouldn't be surprised with what Ivory has now sold the folks on the sidelines for more playing time next week. Well, they've got some some fine athletes, and uh, you know, Penn State Keith plays more people than anybody I've ever seen. They play about six or seven linebackers, the same amount of defensive linemen. They play eight or nine defensive backs in a ball game. And 
And a lot of the time they play different positions. They don't always go to the same place. Hunting time for Dale. Lions come after him. He knocks it out of there. Gets a lot of spin on it. But it still doesn't take a, a good bounce for him. It bounces straight up and dies right at the 39-yard line for only a 26-yard punt. 13 minutes to play. That pretty much tells you the story. And the third quarter particularly belonged to Southern California. To look at the last seven possessions for Penn State, they started off the game in fine fashion. Five punts, a fumble, and an interception. Gary Brown is now at tailback for the Lions. And Smith in motion. Brown with the ball to the boundary side. Hit first by Howard McCowan, redshirt freshman out of Carson, California, who got very busy in the ball game as of the second quarter. Gain of a couple of yards. Second down and eight. back to throw. Passes away to the sidelines. Pass is caught by Gary Brown and tumbles out of bounds close to a first down. Let's go for a moment to Jackaroo. And Keith, the man next to me is the outstanding track coach at the University of Southern California, Jim Bush. And Jim, you watch with a lot of interest, both the offense and the defense here at Southern Cal. Right. I come out to watch them in practice and watch the game so I can see my track team. Most of your track team does compete here. Now, Calvin Holmes is your leadoff runner. In the sprint relay, my sprint relay, all four of them are here. In fact, the two all runners are also here. The mile relay is also here. My hurdler's here. My javelin thrower, my discus thrower. So he's got a lot at stake. And you know what, Keith? It's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Jim. Thank you very much. Hey, Jim. An old friend. He, was, he became world famous, literally, uh, as the track field coach over at UCLA. Coached the Bruins to all manner of lofty things. Involved with producing so many Olympians and took some time off and suddenly found the appetite to coach again and now he's here at Southern California. Looks great. So the Nittany Lions now trying to crank up something with this first down at the Southern California 49-yard line. Tony Sackett's pass is good. Pulled in by Rick Sales, and Sales is reeled in down near the 40-yard line. But the presence of Jim Bush and what he just told you about the number of people involved in the track program being part of the football team helps explain why there's so much speed now available to Larry Smith and his staff. Plus the fact that you've got one of the great teachers in the world uh, as far as, as showing people how to go faster <laughs> with their feet. Well, he worked with Scott Ross, the linebacker, this past summer. Yep. It's second down and two. There goes Brown. Missed by two and still going. Gary Brown is inside the 10 first and goal. Penn State at the nine. And three Trojans didn't tackle him. Had hands on him and couldn't hold him. And Howard McCallan finally brought him down. So look at some of the outstanding running backs at Penn State. Heisman Trophy winner Capaletti, some Hall of Famers in Lydell Mitchell, I mean, uh, Franco Harris, and Lenny Moore, first round draft choices. But you look at Gary Brown, he has the speed that Thompson does not have at that position. First and goal Lions, they trail 19 to 7, a lot of time left in the ball game. Brown has it again. Missed by another Trojan, heading for the corner. Don't give it to him, just short. Six inches. Stefan Pace kept him out of the end zone. Gary Brown has put some spark back into this Penn State offense. Last year he was a defensive back. Switched over to uh, offense. He played offense in 88, defense in 89, and offense again this year. The fullback gashed, and he's not going to get in. 
lost the ball, too. Yeah, Brian Tulio, number 56, made the penetration, took away his momentum, and then they were able to slam him down. He might have lost a little bit. But not enough to matter. It's still about a foot. They were wandering around. Gary Brown had a little trouble uh, getting himself in the right place to lead the blocking. Thompson is in now, and Brown is out at tailback. for the TD and they don't get it. Linesman making the mark. Wouldn't give it to him. Scott Ross, the middle linebacker, is going to slow this play up. He gets into the backfield right there. Doesn't make the tackle, but slows him up enough that the rest of the uh, USC defense can get there. So they're just short. First and goal at the nine, and now they're fourth down at about a foot, and they're talking. Rolling out, all over him, ball loose. Incomplete forward pass, Southern California takes over. They come across. They're on the offensive side of the line. Everybody's coming. McCowan, number seven, Hartsiker, Barber, all the linebackers, all the DBs. Nothing slow will work in this uh, instance. you got to go hard and right at them. Take a look at number two. Number 98, 56 is Tulio. Everybody's on the offensive side of the line of scrimmage. Four series inside the five-yard line for Penn State. I don't understand that call. I don't understand. The ball is just short of the goal line, about a foot away, and that's where Southern California possesses it now for first down. And Marinovich takes the snap and just rides the rump of the Polskis for as much as he can get. And there's a penalty flag. Going right on the goal line. Well, you've got to give credit to get the call here. That ball, delay the game, offense. Big deal. Four inch <laughs> penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Chevrolet players will be announced toward the end of the ball game as soon as we figure out who they might be. You got to give credit to the SC defense for stopping uh, Penn State, but uh, yeah, but to uh, I I don't know I I got you know you, you got to send my tailback flying. You got to you got to the second and third down plays. You got to give it to straight ahead stuff, quick stuff. It cannot be anything slow because the defense is coming very quickly across the line of scrimmage. Second down. Don't make it first down after the penalty, and this uh, will be good for a carry out to about the three by Spears, the fullback. One of the things you don't especially like to do, of course, when you're down here in this kind of a ball game is be handing the ball around either, you know, because you drop it, the other guys jump it, you may not be able to, de to deny them a second successive time. Well, Southern Cal's goal line defense, obviously much better than Penn State's goal line offense. And when you get down inside the five-yard line, it's just aggressiveness and who wants it the, the worst. Titus Tuiasa Sopo is in there right now snapping the ball. Here's the pass out of the end zone. Oh, my goodness, he overthrew him. Larry Wallace was on his way home, and uh, the only, only person on the field that had a shot at him would have been Willie Thomas. And Willie, with his speed, probably could have caught him with the angle. But Marinovich just missed him. Titus Tuiasasopo is, of course, the cousin of Manu Tuiasasopo, who was a great player over at UCLA. Tell you what, the folks 
wearing the white shirt ain't quit. Well, they haven't quit, and they're going to get the ball back in pretty good field position. What 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 that goal line stand did was negate the good running of Brown on that last series by Penn State. Tyson Thomas and Terry Smith will go back now for Penn State as Dale comes in to do the punting. And uh, as the two receivers, you see them looking into the sun. So at this time of year, with a, this time of day, they're kind of looking right at it. Very bright. Dale out of the end zone. That's Tyson Thomas at the 42. To the 31, and Penn State is still knocking on the door. Time remaining, 7 minutes, 54 seconds. USC leads by 12. If you have an insurance repair on your home, and you have Allstate, it's in our hands. We know some very reliable contractors. It's our business, too. So if you choose a contractor we recommend, we guarantee the workmanship of their repairs for one year. That's why you're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Think about it. There are thousands of building products in there. So which do you ask for? Just ask for Georgia Pacific. Even if you forget that our southern... Even if steam cured and solid lineal are Greek to you, just remember that every GP product has superior performance built in. So if ceramic coated granules or acroglass top coat seem impossible to remember, just ask for Georgia Pacific. That's all you need to know. Did you know only one 800 service can move more merchandise? One 800 service connects calls 25% faster and has the fewest blocked calls. AT&T 800 service. Our superior performance gets more calls through so you can make more sales. 800 calls that get through. Another AT&T advantage. Pick up your sales. Get free installation on domestic AT&T 800 service. Did you know that four of the seven California Supreme Court justices are graduated of the USC Law Center, including the Chief Justice? Mr. Justice Kaufman retired earlier this year. Three remain. From the 31 of Southern California now, Penn State goes back to the attack. The defensive guys did their job. They kept them pinned up, gave the offense the ball, good field position, second, based out of the pocket, delivers, bad pass. Trying to get it to Smith, he couldn't do it. Our ABC NFL Monday Night Football presentation, Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs, Mile High Stadium on Monday night, 9 Eastern time. Do you ever play at uh, Mile High? Yes, many times. You get winded? It didn't affect me much. I wasn't running around a lot. <laughs> Maybe some of those other guys. Be a good matchup. We'll find out about the Chiefs. It looks like Scott Timer and Marty's trying to get those guys cranked up. This is Sam Gash right here, the fullback, trying to get the Penn State offense cranked up. Only problem he had was Scott Ross was beating on him. Two inside linebackers, 35 right here. Ross plays off the blocker so well. Then Kurt Barber. Comes across, puts a hit on it. So it is third down and seven. Saka throwing. Oh, caught! How in the world did it get there? David Daniels makes the catch as Stefan Pace went flying through the air. Remarkable concentration by Daniels to catch the ball. Take a look at it, what it would be if you were the safety here. Ground level. Pace just misses the ball. Good concentration, as you mentioned, inside the five. First and goal from the three for Penn State. They were down on the nine, first and goal, and couldn't score. Give it to Leroy Thompson. He may not oh, may didn't make it think. He didn't get it in. Julio. 
Willick and Webb where the hitter. You know, this, this SC defense against the run last year was the toughest in the nation. And today, they've only given up 67 yards. I think Penn State ought to try something through the air on the second and third down. Brown is in a tailback. Brown has it. Running wide, he gets a yard. Again, Ross had penetration. Too much quickness and speed up front for Southern Cal defensively. They move laterally very well, and they're strong enough up front. Give that tackle to Gibson. Ball is at the two. Third down and goal. Brown out, Thompson back. Brings the play with it. Thompson, 205-pounder, got outside where Stephon Pace, 190-pounder, had to take him on, and Thompson won. You go to a passing formation. Southern Cal now thinks pass, and Penn State comes back with a run. Good block on Hartsiker, number 40. And as you mentioned, the big back on the free safety has to come a long angle, and Penn State wins the battle and scores the touchdown. To attempt the point after. Black. Nardolillo will put it down. Matt gets a good snap, gets it on the tee, and Craig Fayek makes the kick. Good. One kick less than five minutes to play, and it's a five point ball game. It's terrific to go for a right one. It really is. Well, that drive right there was an extension of the drive previous to that where they didn't get in the end zone because they stopped Southern Cal on three plays, made them punt, and then they continued it. Well, the heat, though, uh, has now shifted, hasn't it? The heat is definitely on Southern Cal. The momentum is back with Penn State, and Southern Cal needs to make some first downs. And at least if they don't score, it takes some time off the clock. Travis Hanna, Curtis Conway, all the deep people for SC now. And Craig Fayak will kick it off. That's a high hanger. Anna, six yard line. He was almost beheaded, but he's a tough little guy. He bangs his way on out near the 20. But they're going to mark him down at the 18. Young Rider. The United saddle it up on Saturday night for the first time. Special two hour movie with guest star David Soul. That's tonight, 8 o'clock, 7 Central, here on ABC. Well, that's not exactly high cotton field position here for Southern California. They lead 19 to 14, but they have got to protect themselves here. Illinois has gone to the lead over Colorado, as you see, late in that ball game, and California is now on the seven behind Miami. And Ricky Irvin will be stopped short of the line of scrimmage, a loss of two yards back to the 16. Early in the season, two teams, they don't really know how good they are. Both coaches said, we're average teams, but we're going to get better. Going through a little bit of a crisis right here on both sidelines. Second down, 12. Aranovich pass almost intercepted. Keith Goganis had the ball on his hand and didn't catch it. The linebackers aren't receiving. Here's Goganis here, Keith. The pass is going to be an out. Now watch him as he drops and almost cuts in front of him. This would have been six points the other way. Aranovich probably didn't see him because if he saw him, he would never have thrown it. 4-10 to play in the ball game. Third and 12, Southern California. 
from their own 16-yard line. Marinovich throwing, passes away, down the middle, caught. Good for a first down at the 33-yard line. Gary Wellman. Had to throw it between a linebacker and a defensive back with a lineman in his face. What did Marinovich say to us yesterday, Keith? He said, when it gets to be crunch time, I look for 83. Big play right there. I'm not sure he had both handles on the ball either. But he's got his first down, and it was huge play. Bovac Spears. Maybe one. You know, looking at those Penn State uniforms, are they all white? Yeah, let's correct the score that came up on the computer. It's one point lead, Illinois, 23-22, not 25. You know, Keith, you take a look at the uniforms, you know, they're all white, they're not flashy, they wear black shoes, nothing on their helmets. You think they're slow, they can't move, they're not very agile. I think I think Paterno likes that kind of image. Of course he does. <laughs> That's exactly why he does. I first met Joe and knew him when he was Rip Ingalls' assistant there. I'll tell you what. He's a, he's, a, he's a great coach. He's a great teacher. He's a fine man. He's cranky, downright grumpy sometimes, but always clever. Clever. Yeah, crafty. He prepares his team very well, but at the same time, very simple. Yeah. Basically, very simple. Yeah. Third down. Marinovich dodges one, gets it off. Ball is caught, but it's only to the 40. That's two and a half yards short of the first down. Kicking team had started on the field. Penn State now is apparently going to burn a timeout to save the clock at two minutes and 14 seconds. Your crowd is 70,594. For well, a good turnout for the ball game at the old Los Angeles Coliseum. On fourth down, has to punt it away. Dale gets one of the better ones of the day. He runs Tyson Thomas back to the 13-yard line, but he gets the sideline and All comes right. back up to the 32. Oh boy, there was some hard stopping on the SC sideline on that return. But that little guy was almost gone. And there was an alley up the sideline. If he could have just been a little bit quicker, he had some room to run. Watch to the left of the screen. That's Chesley, 52, allowing him to get around him. If he could just get by Barber. Only Holmes to beat. Calvin was the last one. But still, 2.02 to play. 48-yard punt, 20-yard return, 28 net. Penn State's ball, first down, they're 32. They trail 19-14. Sakovac passes away, and it's big. And it's incomplete. Intended for Terry Smith, the senior from Monroeville, and Calvin Holmes was running right with it. Let's beat the Phillies, Toronto beat Baltimore. Baseball scores complete. Oakland. Oakland is ambling home. The pressure's off them in the American League West. Dodgers and Cincinnati having at it the National League West. The Mets closing down on the Pirates in the National League East. Second down and ten. Good catch by Gary Brown, but Craig Hartsacker is right there. And Brown pulled it down one-handed, made his turn. Hartsacker got him. And there's a loss on the play back near the 29. This is where Penn State is really at a disadvantage, not having a really a uh, upscale passing attack. Fumble by Saka. Didn't get the snap, had to go to the ground to cover it, and it brings up fourth down. 
Timeout, Penn State. That should be their last one. That is just a cardinal sin. You cannot do that. Third down, you've got to get the snap from center. You waste the down, you're fourth down with a minute and 24 seconds to play. Can't tell there whether the center stood up too quickly or the, or the quarterback pulled out. That's something you take for granted. One of the fundamentals, one of the miscues, another miscue that Penn State fighting. Last week they had a bunch of them, and this week not as many, but certainly those that they have had have been costly. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Tony Sacco, Penn State. Tony having frustrating day because it looks like his team may lose by a little bit. And of course, Todd Marinovich of Southern California. The numbers for Tony Saka, 16 out of 33, 242 yards and a touchdown. Marinovich, 22 out of 34, 239 yards and a touchdown. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements to help those who need it. Yes, fourth down. Sucker's pass. It is a fed. Second one today. And the second one for Stefan Pace. And this one is in the book. Mark Harry, our spotter today, our new bridegroom. Billy Edwards. Lord have known Billy for so long. I don't know. Can't think of how many years. But he's been the man who has controlled things on the sideline for us. He says this is his last game. College game. He's going to the pros now. He's leaving us. He feels he's graduated after 41 years. Well, he's been doing the pros, too. I mean, he's just, <laughs> he's just dropping us. <laughs> it's all right, Billy. <laughs> Southern Cal put some pressure, moved Saka around in the pocket. This ball was almost there. Pace makes an excellent uh, effort. The cut in front of the receiver and picked that off had been out in front of him a little bit more. May have been a completion. So the Trojans now will just take a snap, get the clock rolling. Penn State uh, with no more timeouts remaining, and this one should go in the books unless the Trojans somehow drop the ball. So uh, Southern California is going to win this ball game, 19 to 14, and uh, frankly, nobody is surprised that it was a hard, tough, grinded out, wasn't good football game. It wasn't pretty, but these two teams are very tough and very physical, and that's the type of game we got. Gary Wellman, a big day, nine catches, 121 yards, and seven of those catches went for first down. Next week, doubleheader out of the state of Michigan. Starting at noon Eastern time, UCLA Bruins, who are about to play Stanford over at the Rose Bowl, will be at Michigan and Ann Arbor. And we'll be up at East Lansing as Notre Dame rolls into town to play the Michigan State Spartans. And Notre Dame tonight is playing Michigan at South Bend. So Larry Smith keeps on winning at the USC. 29, 8, and 8. 8 and 1 now. And uh, looking for his fourth successive trip to the Rose Bowl. So Joe will cut across the field and shake hands with him. And your final score in 1914, Southern California.